In this video, I'm gonna talk about probably my favorite piece of tow behind lawn equipment. If I gotta recommend one piece of equipment for you to buy to go along with your yard or garden tractor, it would be one of these, a tow behind lawn sweeper. So this one specifically is the John Deere 42 inch tow behind sweeper. They also make a 44 inch. Uh, other companies also make them. I believe this one's made by Brindley. Um, Agrifab I think makes the 44 inch one and those companies all make their own versions too with their name on them. Uh, but they all basically work the same. So in a nutshell, there's a set of counter rotating brushes behind here that is driven by the wheels and that basically picks grass, uh, pine cones, whatever you have in your yard, picks it up and throws it back into this hopper. Um, and then from there, you can pull on this cord and it dumps out. Now. 44 inch one I believe uses like a metal rod but all together same basic principle on this one there's a handle here this lowers it down to the ground so right now it's in transportation mode and you can lower this uh, to get it so the brushes engage the ground um, this specific model has an adjustable tongue that you move up and down uh, I found out through another viewer um, that the 44 inch model doesn't have a tongue similar to that it actually has uh, sets of rubber bushings that you put in there and you use that to adjust based on the height of your tractor's hitch from the ground to get this to set up work properly but uh, I think I prefer this method um, seems to work really well you, you don't got to mess around with bushings it's easy to unhook and hook up in a pinch I switch between attachments quite often so that's something that works good for me at this point I think we'll uh, take a closer look at some of the features on this so as I briefly mentioned before, this tongue is adjustable. You have four different positions here. Um, and then it has your standard, I think it's a half inch pin uh, to secure it to the back of your tractor. Um, adjustment, super easy. Loosen these two bolts, move it up or down. Um, this one was actually set up for my D105. Um, I didn't change it at all for the 580 yet. Um, I probably should take a look at the instruction sheet. Um, the instruction sheet has the setting of which holes you use depending on the height of the hitch uh, of the tractor to the ground. So based on that, it kind of levels everything else out. Um, that's how you basically adjust the hamper height um, on the back. Uh, if, it's, if it's too low, like uh, say on this setting, um, it's probably not correct because that is going to be the 580 sits higher where the hitch is. So with this pushed up like that and then this raised all the way up it's going to be pushing that hamper into the ground dragging it on the ground so I need to probably if anything remeasure it bring this up so that it pulls the back up um, but I'll get to that at a later point in time uh, it works for now so I'm not really too terribly worried about it but uh, I do got to say looking at the blueprint that I was given by the other viewer that mentioned uh, that there's a difference with the other, the 44 inch one. Uh, I gotta say, I probably recommend you go with this one um, as far as easy use. Cause that other one, granted it's two inches wider. I feel like that hitch setup could definitely uh, be a deal breaker. So let's move on. Your other adjustment is right here. And this is the brush height adjustment. So that is gonna determine how far into the ground the brush is engaged depending on what kind of material you're pushing up. Now you probably can't see too well but there is a sticker here that specifies what types of materials are for which height. So your first couple settings are for extremely light materials, the middle ones I believe are grass and then the lowest one, what's it even say? Sorry, the lowest one's for grass, high is for heavy, so basically lighter materials down here heavier materials up here. So if you're doing pine cones and stuff like that, you're going to be up here. Grass, you're going to be down here. But you can see, you just kind of pull this out and it will lower the brushes. And it's a little kind of, it's kind of weird getting it back up. Kind of have to hold on to that. It's just a little bit of a goofy setup, but it does work pretty well. If this hopper is fully loaded, you're probably going to have a hard time getting it back into that top pit. But uh, overall, works pretty good. One thing I usually point out about these tow behind pieces of equipment is the wheel setup and what it's made of. So the tire you're going to have 
a uh, no flat, just solid rubber tire, and it is on a plastic hub. Um, and then you have plastic bushings, um, not bearings, which isn't really a problem. Uh, you wouldn't really want bearings because the wheels are what drive this thing. So if you did, you wouldn't be doing much. I currently have the hopper in the flipped up position. This is how you would dump it. You may be able to see there's some grass that was still in it that now uh, fell out onto the ground, but we'll take care of that. Uh, one thing a lot of people you'll see in reviews say is that the hopper will rip on the bottom. I don't know if people are going over gravel with theirs or what, but uh, you can see the bottom of mine here has no damage. It's a pretty solid material. I don't know if it's like a, some sort of reinforced vinyl or what but it's all in good shape on the bottom now i do have some rips on the sides but i'm not too terribly worried about that if i really wanted to fix that i probably could this one almost doesn't even look much like a rip that one is but to me after a year and a half now a hard use it's pretty good i mean that can be fixed the other side has the same and it's only ripped there because it looks like there's like a bolt there's a bolt hole right there so it's not even from like groundwork really you know running along the ground or anything that's just like i guess poor design but i'm not gonna knock anyone too hard for that i mean this thing seems to be holding up pretty well a lot better than what you'll find in a lot of reviews looking underneath from the back here, you can see the brushes. Uh, there are a total of six brushes, three on each side. Um, and they do stretch the full width of that 42 inches, so you are getting, you know, as wide as the body of this is, you are getting that much of a uh, pickup width. So that's pretty good. Um, and then you can see there that one brush sticking into the ground. So, I mean, this doesn't just like gently graze the top of the grass, like this will pick up you know anything that's kind of laying in the grass so this thing you know works more than just picking up grass clippings i mean if you have uh if you dethatched and have thatch in the yard uh, i use this for that and it does a fantastic job picking up all the thatch um, grass clippings of course uh, it'll pick up leaves uh, pine cones really anything you want to throw at it i mean it'll pick up small rocks even um, I guess maybe even some some real old dog poop you can see on the side right here there is some grass built up around that axle piece that goes through there uh, occasionally stuff will get tangled in there um, say you run over some poorly buried uh, invisible dog fence wire uh, you, this has picked some of that up that i've had around the property uh, it's picked that up and then gotten tangled in there and then it usually doesn't want to work quite so good it'll stop the wheels uh, you just got to be careful if you run into that because then you'll be dragging the wheels that aren't able to be moved because of the brushes being tangled up and then you could run a risk of breaking the gearing in there which i'll get to that but uh you just want to you probably don't want to be i know when i mow i usually listen to music and my earbuds but usually whenever i'm using this piece of machine or yeah piece of machinery whenever i'm using this toe behind uh i usually don't listen to music or anything because i want to be able to hear if it's dragging or if anything's going on that way i can stop quick and you know untangle it if it needs untangled or you know this this can pick up you know some sticks and twigs uh, but if you get something a little too big you know it could also clog up so you, you just want to be careful i mean there again common sense like i think people expect this to you know be able to pick up literally anything you throw at it um, and I think the people that write the negative reviews are the ones that, you know, are probably going and, you know, going through a driveway, picking up gravel with it, <laughs> not its intended use. So, uh, these brushes do work really good. Next item, I'm going to talk about the line here. Uh, this is not the line that it comes with. Um, the line is used to dump it. You basically just get off and pull and it dumps up. Um, it does come with some velcro strips you can attach one to the tractor and then one on the handle here and you can stick this to the tractor that way it's right there so theoretically you don't have to get off uh, i didn't find that with the original line that it worked very well it wasn't quite long enough anytime you'd turn it would rip it off 
and then when it did you'd run it over and then this would get tangled up in the brushes and uh, that thing wouldn't want to move and not pick up anything so I didn't see that as being a very good thing so I usually just kind of tucked it into here and went along um, now that I lengthen this though I can loop it over the armrest on the 580 and it's right there for me. I still get off though because generally, depending on how much grass you put in here, it can get pretty heavy and you'll want to get on the ground so you can get some weight behind it rather than just try to pull it from, you know, the seat of your tractor. Um, this was the line. This is the line it came with. You can see the difference in thickness. This one's a bit thicker. Uh, this one's just some really cheap twisted nylon. It's not braided or anything. Uh, it kept fraying and coming apart and this end I kept this was where it was tied up top here I kept uh, pulling it right off I was getting tired of it so replaced it now one of the biggest complaints about this piece of equipment that you'll find in reviews and probably any of these types of things is what is inside here and that is where the gears are that drive the brushes now problem people say is that it's a metal gear on a plastic gear and that is true there's a metal gear here at the back the smaller gear and then there's a big plastic gear at the front it is an abs plastic gear and i guess people have issues with them breaking teeth stripping out and then it doesn't work so seeing this in reviews i got to some research and thought well maybe nobody's doing anything to lubricate that gearing and because of it being dry and not wanting to slide easily, you know, not having any kind of lubrication in there, even though it's metal and plastic, so you probably wouldn't really need much. Figured it'd be better if there was something in there to at least take some of that wear away. So I researched what kind of lubricant, I, you know, would be the best for an ABS plastic gear like this, and I came up with a Teflon or PTFE type of lubricant. So I use this kind. Um, it was hard to find in Alaska. I actually couldn't find it in Alaska, so I had to uh, had to buy it online, have it shipped up here. But uh, if you're in the States, you can probably find something like this pretty easy. Um, but basically, if you pop this cover, you can see in here, it is a little bit dirty because it doesn't seal 100%, it's more so a cover. Don't look for it to be completely dust, watertight, whatever. But you can see the metal gear back there and then this big ABS gear here. Now you can see mine looks pretty good. Not the most clean, but I don't have any broken teeth. I don't really have any worn teeth, nothing like that. And I'm gonna attribute that to putting a lubricant on there. Um, I've used this a lot and on the lowest level even which a lot of people say don't use it on the lowest level or you'll break it let me tell you i've used this for at least this whole year plus some of last year um, on the lowest level just to try it out and see and i haven't had a single issue so you can see it looks a little dry now so i'm gonna put some of this on there and just kind of oh, i forgot to shake this all right, so we're just going to put that on the gears, and I'm going to put a good amount on there. And then, just pick this up a little bit, rotate your wheel around a few times, rotate it to where there's no lubricant on there. And then put more on. And then with that, you can seal it back up. And once you use this, that'll get worked into all that gearing. And uh, you will hopefully have a sweeper that lasts a bit longer. Also, just check to make sure all those are closed. I know I actually got this one. It was already assembled by my dealer. Um, and all those weren't snapped shut. So just make sure those are snapped shut so you don't get any extra grass or debris in there that 
you know, doesn't need to be in there. And last, there is a cover here for the front of the hopper. Um, this basically just tries to contain grass and stuff. It can still get out the sides, the top a little bit, um, but for the most part, it works pretty good. Uh, there's Velcro here that secures it, and then you can take that off and roll it up if you wish, and there's Velcro actually on the back of the hopper that you can secure it when it's rolled up. Uh, when I do the demonstration of this, I'll probably roll that up just so you can get a better view of it picking up and throwing grass back in there. Hopefully you enjoyed this video of probably my favorite tow behind tool. Uh, hopefully maybe this swayed you enough to buy it if you were on the fence because maybe of some negative reviews. Um, but I do got to say, this thing was worth every penny. Uh, before I had this, this is what I had to do to my lawn. And it was not fun. It took a long time and it was like the day after that I ended up going and picking one of these up because I was like, I'm not breaking that much again and then picking all that up again. So with that, thanks for watching. Have a good one.